Aryan is a term that was used as a self-designation by Indo-Iranian people. The word was used by the Indic people of the Vedic period in India as an ethnic label for themselves and to refer to the noble class as well as the geographic region known as Aryavarta, where Indo-Aryan culture is based. The closely related Iranian people also used the term as an ethnic label for themselves in the Avesta scriptures, and the word forms the etymological source of the country name Iran. It was believed in the 19th century that Aryan was also a self-designation used by all Proto-Indo-Europeans, a theory that has now been abandoned. Scholars point out that, even in ancient times, the idea of being an Aryan was religious, cultural and linguistic, not racial, drawing on misinterpreted references in the Rig Veda by Western scholars in the 19th century, the term Aryan was adopted as a racial category through the works of Arthur de Gobineau, whose ideology of race was based on an idea of blonde Northern European Aryans, who had migrated across the world and founded all major civilizations, before being degraded through racial mixing with local populations. Through the works of Houston Stuart Chamberlain, Gobineau's ideas later influenced the Nazi racial ideology which saw Aryan peoples. As innately superior to other putative racial groups, the atrocities committed in the name of this racial ideology have led academics to avoid the term Aryan, which has been replaced, in most cases, by Indo-Iranian. The term now only appears in the context of the Indo-Aryan languages. Etymology The English word Aryan originally spelt Aryan, was borrowed from the Sanskrit word Arya, Arya in the 18th century and thought to be the self-designation used by all Indo-European people. Origins Philologist J. P. Mallory argues that, as an ethnic designation, the word Aryan is most properly limited to the Indo-Iranians, and most justly to the latter where it still gives its name to the country Iran. Topic. Sanskrit In early Vedic literature, the term Aryavarta Sanskrit, Aryavarta abode of the Aryans was the name given to northern India, where the Indo-Aryan culture was based. The Manismurta gives the name Aryavarta to the tract between the Himalaya and the Vindhya ranges, from the eastern Bay of Bengal to the western sea, Arabian sea. Initially the term was used as a national name to designate those who worshipped the Vedic deities especially Indra and followed Vedic culture e.g. performance of sacrifice, yajna. <laughs> Proto-Indo-Iranian The Sanskrit term comes from Proto-Indo-Iranian asterisk Arya or asterisk Aryo, the name used by the Indo-Iranians to designate themselves. The Zend Arya venerable and Old Persian Arya are also derivates of asterisk Aryo, and are also self-designations. In Iranian languages, the original self-identifier lives on in ethnic names like Alans and Iron. Similarly, the name of Iran is the Persian word for land, place of the Aryans. Topic: <laughs> Pre-Proto-Indo-Iranians. The Proto-Indo-Iranian term is hypothesized to have Proto-Indo-European origins, while according to Zemirani it is probably a Near Eastern loanword from the Ugaritic Ari, kinsman. It has been postulated the Proto-Indo-European root word is asterisk heros with the meanings members of one's own ethnic group, peer, freeman, as well as the Indo-Iranian meaning of Aryan. Derived from it were words like the Hittite prefix era meaning member of one's own group, peer, companion and friend. Old Irish air, meaning freeman and noble. Gaulish personal names with Ario, Avestan area meaning Aryan, Iranian in the larger sense. Old Indic Ari meaning attached to, faithful, devoted person and kinsman. Old Indic Arya meaning kind, favorable, attached to and devoted. Old Indic Arya meaning Aryan, faithful to the Vedic religion. The word asterisk Haros itself is believed to have come from the root asterisk Haer meaning put together. The original meaning in Proto-Indo-European had a clear emphasis on the in-group status, as distinguished from that of outsiders, particularly those captured and incorporated into the group as slaves. 
While in Anatolia, the base word has come to emphasize personal relationship, in Indo Iranian the word has taken a more ethnic meaning. A review of numerous other ideas, and the various problems with each is given by Oswald Zemirani. Topic. Usage Topic. Scholarly usage Proto-Indo-Europeans, during the 19th century, it was proposed that Aryan was also the self-designation of the Proto-Indo-Europeans, a hypothesis that has been abandoned. Aryan language family the Indo-Aryan languages including the Dardic, Iranian languages and Nuristani languages Indo-Aryan languages specifically, also called Indic. Topic. Contemporary usage Topic. Indian and Iranian nationalism The term, Aryan, is used by Indian nationalists and Iranian nationalists to refer themselves. Topic. Nazism and white supremacy during the 19th century it was proposed that Aryan was also the self-designation of the Proto-Indo-Europeans. Based on speculations that the Proto-Indo-European homeland was located in Northern Europe, a 19th century hypothesis which is now abandoned, the word developed a racialist meaning. The Nazis used the word Aryan to describe people in a racial sense. The Nazi official Alfred Rosenberg believed that the Nordic race was descended from Proto-Aryans, who he believed had prehistorically dwelt on the North German plain and who had ultimately originated from the lost continent of Atlantis. According to Nazi racial theory, the term Aryan described the Germanic peoples. However, a satisfactory definition of Aryan remained problematic during Nazi Germany. The Nazis considered the purest Aryans to be those that belonged to the Nordic race physical ideal, known as the master race, during Nazi Germany. Although the physical ideal of the Nazi racial theorists was typically the tall, fair-haired and light-eyed Nordic individual, such theorists accepted the fact that a considerable variety of hair and eye color existed within the racial categories they recognized. For example, Adolf Hitler and many Nazi officials had dark hair and were still considered members of the Aryan race under Nazi racial doctrine, because the determination of an individual's racial type depended on a preponderance of many characteristics in an individual rather than on just one defining feature. In September 1935, the Nazis passed the Nuremberg Laws. All Aryan Reich citizens were required to prove their Aryan ancestry. One way was to obtain an Ahnenpass by providing proof through baptismal certificates that all four grandparents were of Aryan descent. In December 1935, the Nazis founded Lebensborn to counteract the falling Aryan birth rates in Germany, and to promote Nazi eugenics. Topic. Usage and adaptation in other languages Topic. In Indian, Sanskrit literature In Sanskrit and related Indic languages, Arya means, "...one who does noble deeds, a noble one." Aryavarta, "...abode of the Aryas," is a common name for North India in Sanskrit literature. Manasmurda gives the name to, "...the tract between the Himalaya and the Vindhya ranges, from the Eastern Sea to the Western Sea." The title Arya was used with various modifications throughout the Indian subcontinent. Karavela, the emperor of Kalinga of around 1 BCE, is referred to as an Arya in the Hathagumpha inscriptions of the Udiagiri and Khandagiri caves in Bhubaneswar, Odisha. The Gurhara Pratihara rulers in the 10th century were titled Maharajadiraja of Aryavarta. Various Indian religions, chiefly Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism, use the term Arya as an epithet of honor. A similar usage is found in the name of Arya Samaj. In Ramayana and Mahabharata, Arya is used as an honorific for many characters including Hanuman. Topic: In Iranian literature. Unlike the several meanings connected with Arya in Old Indo-Aryan, the Old Persian term only has an ethnic meaning. That is in contrast to Indian usage, in which several secondary meanings evolved. The meaning of Ar as a self-identifier is preserved in Iranian usage, hence the word Iran. The area meant Iranian, and Iranian Anaria meant and means non-Iranian. 
Arya may also be found as an ethnonym in Iranian languages, e.g., Alan and Persian Iran and Ossetian Ir. Iron the name is itself equivalent to Aryan, where Iran means, land of the Aryans, and has been in use since Sassanid times. The Avesta clearly uses Arya, Aryan as an ethnic name, VD, 1, YT, 13.143-44, etc., where it appears in expressions such as Ariafi, Di Havo, Iranian lands, peoples, Aryo, Sayanam. Land inhabited by Iranians, and Ariam Veyo Vahuyafi, Daityafi, Iranian stretch of the good Daitya, the river Oxus, the modern amusement Darya. Old Persian sources also use this term for Iranians. Old Persian, which is a testament to the antiquity of the Persian language and which is related to most of the languages, dialects spoken in Iran, including modern Persian, the Kurdish languages, and Jalaki makes it clear that Iranians referred to themselves as Arya. The term, Arya, Aryan, appears in the Royal Old Persian inscriptions in three different contexts. As the name of the language of the Old Persian version of the inscription of Darius I in Behistun. As the ethnic background of Darius I in inscriptions at Nakush e Rostam and Susa DNA, DSE, and Xerxes I in the inscription from Persepolis. XPH, as the definition of the god of the Aryans, Ahura Mazda, in the Elamite language version of the Behistun inscription, for example in the DNA and DSE Darius and Xerxes describe themselves as an Achaemenian, a Persian son of a Persian and an Aryan, of Aryan stock. Although Darius the Great called his language the Aryan language, modern scholars refer to it as Old Persian because it is the ancestor of modern Persian language. The Old Persian and Avestan evidence is confirmed by the Greek sources. Herodotus in his histories remarks about the Iranian Medes that, "...these Medes were called anciently by all people Aryans." 7.62. In Armenian sources, the Parthians, Medes and Persians are collectively referred to as Aryans. Eudemus of Rhodes Apud Damasius Dubitationes et Solutions in Platonus Parmenidum 125 bis refers to, "...the Magi and all those of Iranian Aryan lineage." Diodorus Siculus considers Zoroaster as one of the Arianoi. Strabo, in his geography, mentions the unity of Medes, Persians, Bactrians, and Sogdians. The name of Ariana is further extended to a part of Persia and of Media, as also to the Bactrians and Sogdians on the north, for these speak approximately the same language, with but slight variations. The trilingual inscription erected by Shapur's command gives us a more clear description. The languages used are Parthian, Middle Persian and Greek. In Greek the inscription says, Ego tou Arianon ethnos despotes imi, which translates to, I am the king of the Aryans. In the Middle Persian Shapur says, I am the lord of the Aranshar, and in Parthian he says, I am the lord of Aryanshar. The Bactrian language, a Middle Iranian language inscription of Kanishka the Great, the founder of the Kushan Empire at Rabatic, which was discovered in 1993 in an unexcavated site in the Afghanistan province of Baglan, clearly refers to this Eastern Iranian language as Arya. In the post-Islamic era one can still see a clear usage of the term Aryan Iran in the work of the 10th-century historian Hamza al-Isfahani. In his famous book, The History of Prophets and Kings. Al Isfahani writes, Aryan, which is also called Pars, is in the middle of these countries, and these six countries surround it because the southeast is in the hands China, the north of the Turks, the middle south is India, the middle north is Rome, and the southwest and the northwest is the Sudan and Berber lands. All this evidence shows that the name Arya Iranian", was a collective definition, denoting peoples. Geiger, pp. 167f, Schmidt, 1978, p. 31, who were aware of belonging to the one ethnic stock, speaking a common language, and having a religious tradition that centered on the cult of Ahura Mazda. In Iranian languages, the original self identifier lives on in ethnic names like Alans, Iron. Similarly, the word Iran is the Persian word for land, place of the Aryan. Topic. In Latin literature The word Arianus was used to designate Ariana, the area comprising northwestern India, Afghanistan, Iran and Pakistan. In 1601, Philemon Holland used Arians in his translation of the Latin Arianus to designate the inhabitants of Ariana. 
This was the first use of the form Arian verbatim in the English language. In 1844 James Cowles Pritchard first designated both the Indians and the Iranians Arians, under the false assumption that the Iranians as well as the Indians self-designated themselves Arya. The Iranians did use the form Arya as a designation for the Arians, but Pritchard had mistaken Arya deriving from Oper. Haravia as a designation of the Arians, and associated the Arya with the place name Ariana Avenue. Ariana, the homeland of the Arians. The form Arya as a designation of the Arians was, however, only preserved in the language of the Indo-Aryans. In European languages The term Aryan came to be used as the term for the newly discovered Indo-European languages, and, by extension, the original speakers of those languages. In the 19th century, language was considered a property of ethnicity, and thus the speakers of the Indo-Iranian or Indo-European languages came to be called the Aryan race, as contradistinguished from what came to be called the Semitic race. By the late 19th century, among some people, the notions of an Aryan race became closely linked to Nordicism, which posited Northern European racial superiority over all other peoples. This master race ideal engendered both the Aryanization programs of Nazi Germany, in which the classification of people as Aryan and non-Aryan was most emphatically directed towards the exclusion of Jews. By the end of World War II, the word Aryan had become associated by many with the racial ideologies and atrocities committed by the Nazis. Western notions of an Aryan race rose to prominence in late 19th and early 20th century racialism, an idea most notably embraced by Nazism. The Nazis believed that the Nordic peoples, who were also referred to as the Germanic peoples, represent an ideal and pure race. That was the purest representation of the original racial stock of those who were then called the Proto-Aryans. The Nazi party declared that the Nordics were the true Aryans because they claimed that they were more pure, less racially mixed than other people of what were then called the Aryan people. Topic. History Topic. Before the 19th century While the original meaning of Indo-Iranian asterisk Arya as a self-designator is uncontested, the origin of the word and thus also its original meaning remains uncertain. Indo-Iranian R is a syllable ambiguous in origin, from Indo-European R, er, or or. No evidence for a Proto-Indo-European as opposed to Indo-Iranian ethnic name like Aryan has been found. The word was used by Herodotus in reference to the Iranian Medes whom he describes as the people who were once universally known as Aryans. The meaning of Aryan that was adopted into the English language in the late 18th century was the one associated with the technical term used in comparative philology, which in turn had the same meaning as that evident in the very oldest Old Indic usage, i.e. as a self-identifier of speakers of North Indian languages. This usage was simultaneously influenced by a word that appeared in classical sources Latin and Greek Arians Arians, e.g. in Pliny 1.133 and Strabo 15.2.1-8, and recognized to be the same as that which appeared in living Iranian languages, where it was a self-identifier of the speakers of Iranian languages. Accordingly, Aryan came to refer to the languages of the Indo-Iranian language group, and by extension, native speakers of those languages. Topic. Avestan The term Arya is used in ancient Persian language texts, for example in the Behistun inscription from the 5th century BCE, in which the Persian kings Darius the Great and Xerxes are described as Aryans of Aryan stock. Arya Arya Chika. The inscription also refers to the deity Ahura Mazda as the god of the Aryans, and to the ancient Persian language as Aryan. In this sense the word seems to have referred to the elite culture of the ancient Iranians, including both linguistic, cultural and religious aspects. The word also has a central place in the Zoroastrian religion in which the Aryan expanse Ariana Veja, is described as the mythical homeland of the Iranian peoples and as the center of the world. 
Topic: <inaudible> Vedic Sanskrit. The term Arya is used 36 times in 34 hymns in the Rigveda. According to Talagiri, 2000, the Rigveda, a historical analysis. The particular Vedic Aryans of the Rigveda were one section among these purists, who called themselves Bharatas. Thus it is possible, according to Talagiri, that at one point Arya did refer to a specific tribe. While the word may ultimately derive from a tribal name, already in the Rigveda it appears as a religious distinction, separating those who sacrifice properly from those who do not belong to the historical Vedic religion, presaging the usage in later Hinduism where the term comes to denote religious righteousness or piety. In RV 9.63.5, Arya, noble, pious, righteous, is used as contrasting with Aravan, not liberal, envious, hostile. Indram Vardanto Aptara Krenvanto Visvam Aryam Apananto Aravna the Soma drops, performing every noble work, active, augmenting Indra's strength, driving away the godless ones. Trans. Griffith <inaudible> Sanskrit epics Arya and Anarya are primarily used in the moral sense in the Hindu epics. People are usually called Arya or Anarya based on their behavior. Arya is typically one who follows the Dharma. This is historically applicable for any person living anywhere in Bharata Varsha or vast India. According to the Mahabharata, a person's behavior not wealth or learning determines if he can be called an Arya. Topic. Religious use The word Arya is often found in Hindu, Buddhist, and Jain texts. In the Indian spiritual context, it can be applied to rishis or to someone who has mastered the Four Noble Truths and entered upon the spiritual path. According to Nehru, the religions of India may be called collectively Arya Dharma, a term that includes the religions that originated in India e.g. Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism and possibly Sikhism. Topic. Hinduism O oh my Lord, a person who is chanting your holy name, although born of a low family like that of a Chandala, is situated on the highest platform of self-realization. Such a person must have performed all kinds of penances and sacrifices according to Vedic literatures many, many times after taking bath in all the holy places of pilgrimage. Such a person is considered to be the best of the Arya family. Bhagavata Purana 3.33.7 My dear Lord, one's occupational duty is instructed in Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita according to your point of view, which never deviates from the highest goal of life. Those who follow their occupational duties under your supervision, being equal to all living entities, moving and nonmoving, and not considering high and low, are called Aryans. Such Aryans worship you, the Supreme Personality of Godhead." Bhagavata Purana 6.16.43. According to Swami Vivekananda, a child materially born is not an Arya, the child born in spirituality is an Arya. Quote. He further elaborated, referring to the Manu Smriti. Says our great law giver, Manu, giving the definition of an Arya, he is the Arya, who is born through prayer, every child not born through prayer is illegitimate, according to the great law giver, the child must be prayed for. Those children that come with curses, that slip into the world, just in a moment of inadvertence, because that could not be prevented, what can we expect of such progeny? Swami Vivekananda, Complete Works Volume 8 Swami Dayananda founded a dharmic organization Arya Samaj in 1875. Sri Aurobindo published a journal combining nationalism and spiritualism under the title Arya from 1914 to 1921. Topic: <inaudible> Buddhism. The word Arya, Pali Arya, in the sense of noble or exalted is very frequently used in Buddhist texts to designate a spiritual warrior or hero, which use this term much more often than Hindu or Jain texts. Buddha's Dharma and Vinaya are the Arya Sadhama Vinaya. The Four Noble Truths are called the Katvari Arya Satyani Sanskrit or Katari Arya Sakani Pali. The Noble Eightfold Path is called the Aryamarga Sanskrit, also Aryastangikamarga or Arayamaga Pali. Buddhists themselves are called Aryapugalas Arya persons. 
In Buddhist texts, the Aryas are those who have the Buddhist sila, Pali sila meaning virtue, and follow the Buddhist path. Those who despise Buddhism are often called Anuryas. Topic: <laughs> Jainism. The word Arya is also often used in Jainism in Jain texts such as the Panavanasutta. Topic: 19th century. In the 19th century, linguists still supposed that the age of a language determined its superiority because it was assumed to have genealogical purity. Then, based on the assumption that Sanskrit was the oldest Indo-European language, and the now known to be untenable position that Irish Iyer was etymologically related to Aryan, in 1837 Adolf Pictet popularized the idea that the term Aryan could also be applied to the entire Indo-European language family as well. The groundwork for this thought had been laid by Abraham Hyacinth Anquital de Peron. In particular, German scholar Carl Wilhelm Friedrich Schlegel published in 1819 the first theory linking the Indo-Iranian and the German languages under the Aryan group. In 1830 Karl Ottfried Müller used Arier in his publications. Topic. Theories of Aryan invasion Translating the sacred Indian texts of the Rig Veda in the 1840s, German linguist Friedrich Max Müller found what he believed to be evidence of an ancient invasion of India by Hindu Brahmins, a group he described as the Arya. Müller was careful to note in his later work that he thought Aryan was a linguistic category rather than a racial one. Nevertheless, scholars used Müller's invasion theory to propose their own visions of racial conquest through South Asia and the Indian Ocean. In 1885, the New Zealand polymath Edward Tregear argued that an Aryan tidal wave had washed over India and continued to push south, through the islands of the East Indian archipelago, reaching the distant shores of New Zealand. Scholars such as John Batchelor, Armand de Quatrefages, and Daniel Brinton extended this invasion theory to the Philippines, Hawaii, and Japan, identifying indigenous peoples who they believed were the descendants of early Aryan conquerors. In the 1850s, Arthur de Gobineau supposed that Aryan corresponded to the suggested prehistoric Indo-European culture 1853-1855, essay on the inequality of the human races. Further, de Gobineau believed that there were three basic races, white, yellow and black, and that everything else was caused by race miscegenation, which de Gobineau argued was the cause of chaos. The master race, according to de Gobineau, were the northern European Aryans, who had remained racially pure. Southern Europeans to include Spaniards and Southern Frenchmen, Eastern Europeans, North Africans, Middle Easterners, Iranians, Central Asians, Indians, he all considered racially mixed, degenerated through the miscegenation, and thus less than ideal. By the 1880s a number of linguists and anthropologists argued that the Aryans themselves had originated somewhere in Northern Europe. A specific region began to crystallize when the linguist Karl Penke die Herkunft der Arier. Neue Beträge zur historischen Anthropologie der Europäischen Volker, 1886 popularized the idea that the Aryans had emerged in Scandinavia and could be identified by the distinctive Nordic characteristics of blonde hair and blue eyes. The distinguished biologist Thomas Henry Huxley agreed with him, coining the term Xanthokroi to refer to fair-skinned Europeans as opposed to darker Mediterranean peoples, who Huxley called Melanotroi. This Nordic race theory gained traction following the publication of Charles Morris's The Aryan Race, 1888, which touches racist ideology. A similar rationale was followed by Georges Vachet de Lepauge in his book L'Aryan et son rôle social, 1899, The Aryan and His Social Role. To this idea of races, Vachet de Lepauge espoused what he termed selectionism, and which had two aims, first, achieving the annihilation of trade unionists, considered degenerate, second, the prevention of labor dissatisfaction through the creation of types of man, each designed for one specific task see the novel Brave New World for a fictional treatment of this idea. Meanwhile, in India, the British colonial government had followed de Gobineau's arguments along another line, and had fostered the idea of a superior Aryan race that co-opted the Indian caste system in favour of imperial interests. 
In its fully developed form, the British mediated interpretation foresaw a segregation of Aryan and non Aryan along the lines of caste, with the upper castes being Aryan and the lower ones being non Aryan. The European developments not only allowed the British to identify themselves as high caste, but also allowed the Brahmins to view themselves as on par with the British. Further, it provoked the reinterpretation of Indian history in racialist and, in opposition, Indian nationalist terms, and, in following a special interpretation of Max Muller's identification of Aryan as a national name, this gave rise recently among Hindu nationalists the Saffron Brigade to the indigenous Aryans, or so-called out of India theory, disputed by many scholars in academia, which seeks an Indian origin of the Indo-European Aryans. In The Secret Doctrine 1888, Helena Petrovna Blavatsky described the Aryan root race as the fifth of seven root races, dating their souls as having begun to incarnate about a million years ago in Atlantis. The Semites were a subdivision of the Aryan root race. The occult doctrine admits of no such divisions as the Aryan and the Semite. The Semites, especially the Arabs, are later Aryans degenerate in spirituality and perfected in materiality. To these belong all the Jews and the Arabs." The Jews, according to Blavatsky, were a "...tribe descended from the Chandalas of India," as they were born of Abraham, which she believed to be a corruption of a word meaning, "...no Brahmin." Other sources suggest the origin Avram or Avram. The name for the Sasanian Empire in Middle Persian is Iran Shar which means Aryan Empire. In the aftermath of the Islamic conquest in Iran, racialist rhetoric became a literary idiom during the 7th century, i.e., when the Arabs became the primary other, the Anarias, and the antithesis of everything Iranian i.e. Aryan and Zoroastrian. But, the antecedents of present-day Iranian ultra-nationalism can be traced back to the writings of late 19th century figures such as Mirza Fatali Akhandov and Mirza Aqa Khan Kermani. Demonstrating affinity with Orientalist views of the supremacy of the Aryan peoples and the mediocrity of the Semitic peoples, Iranian nationalist discourse idealized pre-Islamic Achaemenid and Sassanid empires, whilst negating the Islamization of Persia by Muslim forces. In the 20th century, different aspects of this idealization of a distant past would be instrumentalized by both the Pahlavi monarchy in 1967, Iran's Pahlavi dynasty overthrown in the 1979 Iranian Revolution added the title Aryamare Light of the Aryans to the other styles of the Iranian monarch, the Shah of Iran being already known at that time as the Shahanshah King of Kings, and by the Islamic Republic that followed it, the Pahlavis used it as a foundation for anti-clerical monarchism, and the clerics used it to exalt Iranian Iranian values vis-a-vis -vis westernization. 20th century In the United States, the best-selling 1907 book Race Life of the Aryan Peoples by Joseph Pomeroy Whitney consolidated in the popular mind the idea that the word Aryan is the proper identification for all Indo-Europeans and that Aryan Americans of the Aryan race are destined to fulfill America's manifest destiny to form an American empire. Gordon Childe would later regret it, but the depiction of Aryans as possessors of a superior language became a matter of national pride in learned circles of Germany, portrayed against the background that World War I was lost because Germany had been betrayed from within by miscegenation and the corruption of socialist trade unionists and other degenerates. Alfred Rosenberg one of the principal architects of Nazi ideological creed, argued for a new religion of the blood, based on the supposed innate promptings of the Nordic soul to defend its noble character against racial and cultural degeneration. Under Rosenberg, the theories of Arthur de Gobineau, Georges Vachet de la Pauge, Blavatsky, Houston Stuart Chamberlain, Madison Grant, and those of Hitler, all culminated in Nazi Germany's race policies and the Aryanization. Decrees of the 1920s, 1930s, and early 1940s. In its appalling medical model, the annihilation of the racially inferior Untermenschen was sanctified as the excision of a diseased organ in an otherwise healthy body, which led to the Holocaust. By the end of World War II, the word Aryan 
Among a number of people had lost its romantic or idealist connotations and was associated by many with Nazi racism instead. By then, the term Indo-Iranian and Indo-European had made most uses of the term Aryan superfluous in the eyes of a number of scholars, and Aryan now survives in most scholarly usage only in the term Indo-Aryan to indicate speakers of North Indian languages. It has been asserted by one scholar that Indo-Aryan and Aryan may not be equated and that such an equation is not supported by the historical evidence, though this extreme viewpoint is not widespread. The use of the term to designate speakers of all Indo-European languages in scholarly usage is now regarded by some scholars as an aberration to be avoided. However, some authors writing for popular consumption have continued using the word Aryan for all Indo-Europeans. In the tradition of H. G. Wells, such as the science fiction author Poole Anderson, and scientists writing for the popular media, such as Colin Renfrew. Notions of the Aryan race as an elite group that is regarded as being superior to other races survive in some far right European groups, such as neo Nazi parties, Russian ultra nationalists, as well as in certain Iranian nationalist groups. Echoes of the 19th century prejudice about northern Aryans who were confronted on Indian soil with black barbarians can still be heard in some modern studies. In a socio-political context, the claim of a white, European Aryan race that includes only people of the Western and not the Eastern branch of the Indo-European peoples is entertained by certain circles, usually representing white nationalists who call for the halting of non-white immigration into Europe and limiting immigration into the United States. They argue that a large intrusion of immigrants can lead to ethnic conflicts such as the 2005 Cronulla riots in Australia and the 2005 civil unrest in France. The invasion theory, has however been questioned by several scholars. See also Arya name Arianum Veja Aryavarta Ariana Arya Samaj Greco Aryan Malecha Topic Notes Topic References Topic Bibliography <references> <references>